My name is Daniel, and I'm the co-founder of Secure Blockchains. Uh, we created Harbor Wallet, which you see up here on the screen. Um, it's an Electron app, and um, it's, uh, it's a fairly, uh, you, what you see is what you get wallet. We operate our own RippleD node, which all of our transactions get processed through, uh, though the application uh, signs transactions locally, so we never have access to uh, the user's secret key, and we, uh, we don't even know what the transaction is that we're processing until we've already received and unpackaged it. So we allow you to generate your own secret keys, import any secret key that, is, that belongs on the XRP ledger, um, and you can see those balances uh, when you log in. Um, we show you your XRP balance and the balance of any IOU that's generated on the XRP uh, ledger. So this is just a wallet that I created uh, to come out to Interledger because I knew that we needed a wallet for something, but we ended up using Testnet. Um, so you can see I've got 99.9950 XRP. It started out as 100, um, but I have paid a 0 .005 XRP fee to create this trust line um, to GRN, which is to my co-founder this morning. My co-founder, Jonathan Green, uh, used our application uh, just a few minutes ago to generate 10 million GRN tokens uh, on the XRP ledger. Um, and there's two different ways that you can generate your own assets within our wallet. Uh, so the first one is you just go to the regular send page. Um, and when you go to the send page, you will see XRP up here as the default option. Um, you can hit the drop down and you'll send any other asset that's within your wallet. Um, or you can click here and issue a new token. And when you issue a new token here, um, it's kind of like the original idea that uh, Ripple had when they were uh, designing the credit issue system. So there's no like cap. You can just keep reissuing those. Um, but if you come back over to the wallet settings page, uh, we've got this generate limited quantity IOU tokens button. Um, and this is something that uh, it's just a series of transactions that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. We basically just generate a new XRP wallet, um, issue tokens from that wallet. Uh, we then uh, transfer those tokens to the originating wallet. Then we set the regular key of the wallet that generated the tokens to the black hole address, to one of the black hole addresses so that we can't undo that. And then we disable the master key um, so that there's no way to ever get back into that account and issue more tokens. So it's a way of definitively um, defining a set number of tokens. Um, and when we have someone that comes through and generates a limited quantity IOU token, um, we add that to our trade page uh, where we have pre-populated a list of currency pairs. Um, so I know uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can access the decentralized exchange. Um, and uh, we've pre-populated all of the most... Um, the order books that have the most liquidity. There's some that just don't have any. Uh, but if you wanted to like sell some of your XRP for some of GateHub's USD tokens, uh, you could just come in here. You could issue the quantity that you want to sell. You could pick a limit price. You could choose the last price, or you could click the market order button. And uh, we'd literally uh, send that transaction, that offer create, onto the ledger and allow you to gather those tokens. Um, we also have escrow capability uh, where you can... Uh, escrow to yourself or to another uh, destination address. And we have two different escrow conditions that you can choose. Time, which is the standard one that's default in the XRP ledger, and price, which is um, basically a time-based escrow that has already expired with the crypto condition that we manage. Um, and then we monitor the price of XRP uh, based off of the top three most liquid exchanges, and we make an average and then monitor that by the second. So if you're you can literally say, I want to lock up my XRP in escrow, and I don't want it back until XRP hits $10, or unless XRP goes below $0.10. Cents. Um, and then your, your, your escrow would automatically unlock, and the funds would be available to you. Um, so right now, like I mentioned, Harbor Wallet is just a XRP-based wallet that allows you to send and perform a couple of the other advanced uh, functionalities within the XRP ledger. And we're really, really interested in Interledger because we think that Interledger is going to allow our customers to do a lot more with their wallet. Um, when I look in ecosystems like EOS, there is a really active use of the currency within that community. And I think within the XRP um, 
community. Probably the most active use of the token is XRP TipBot, uh, though I don't have the data to support that. It's just a guess based on my observation. Um, I would really like to enable people to do more with their XRP um, and more with any of their other tokens. So we're expanding support for other tokens uh, along the rate of the tokens that Interledger supports. And as we can build relationships with connectors that support those tokens, we're going to have native key management in the wallet for those tokens. And you'll be able to send payments directly using those tokens or through Interledger. Um, the primary use cases that we want to enable is for users to be able to use Interledger just to send a payment to a friend if they wanted to um, send that direct peer-to-peer -peer payment and it end up in another currency. Um, we also really like uh, the idea of users being able to do currency exchange in their wallet, go from one native asset to one other native asset and skipping the, the cryptocurrency exchange. Um, and then we also are really interested in web monetization. Uh, there's some really good examples um, in the Tron and in the EOS community of how desktop wallets or browser extensions can interact with websites to perform certain actions. And we want to really tap into that user experience so that if you wanted to, say, go to a gambling site where you can roll the dice, there should be a prompt that pops up and says, how would you like to pay for this? And you can click the button and, and it goes through. Um, so really, we want Harbor to be more than just a, a static storage of XRP, and we're expanding it out and trying to really enable the user to do as much with their cryptocurrency as possible. So, are there any questions? Um, have, you, have you explored uh, payment handler at all, the payment handler APIs in the browser? Um, are you, you're talking about where it automatically, you can just, if there is another currency that you're trying to go through, there's a routing mechanism that finds the cheapest way? No, so, so this is a browser API. Uh -huh. um, so the, um, there, there's an API in the browser to, to request a payment, which is rolling out. It's, it's most mature implementation is in Chrome. So you can, it's targeted e-commerce, but right. it's a generic sort of API where you request, you request payment and the browser acts as the mediator between the site requesting payment and whatever you've got available to fulfill that payment. And yeah. so the, the handler is the thing that your wallet could fulfill would be the handler. Absolutely. Uh, so I, I, am, I know that there are a couple of standards that are used um, to, to perform that kind of an action. And one of the things that I wanted to get out of Interledger is, is there something else that we're trying to design specifically? Or should the focus really be on something that's already standardized? Because it seems like some of the standards, like the payment handler, and then another topic um, is the invoicing that I've seen, it seems like there's already broad enough standards that exist that we could probably adopt um, without having to reinvent the wheel. Um, so it's probably going to be uh, the payment handler API at first, um, unless we come up with something better uh, as a community. Um, you had a question? Yeah, um, I was curious about the escrow uh, functionality. Does Harbor offer uh, like automatic escrow finish uh, transactions, or does the user have to prompt like, that yeah, that, that's actually one of the more popular feature requests that we've got, but no, um, none of the escrows besides the price-based escrow unlock by themselves. Um, and the reason that that happens is because when you generate a time-based escrow um, in our application, you're also going to be generating a crypto condition with a unique fulfillment ID that's delivered to you on screen and then you record elsewhere. And so you're literally the only person that has the capability of unlocking that escrow. That's, that's a, like a new secret key that's delivered to only you locally. We, we don't even get that. We, get, uh, we just get the encrypted version of that that we lock the escrow with when we deliver the transaction to the ledger. Any other questions? Go ahead. Building on that one, so the, the um, time-based is actually time and condition. Yeah, it's uh, it's expire after, I think, is what the condition is called in the documentation, and then uh, crypto condition. So, so you could say that you could set the time to now and just use the secret as that one. That's exactly what we do for price-based condition. It, we use we set the time to like in five minutes. And uh, from that point on, we start monitoring price, and we store that crypto condition in, that, in the price-based condition. Um, but that's delivered to you on screen with some education. Um, any other questions? I'll hop off stage if not. Awesome. Thanks for giving me the time, guys.